hello, hello. Um, anyway, I, I first thing I want to do before I get to this review uh, on this book as well as the movie that goes along with it. Um, now it's the this version of the book and this version of the movie. There are other versions out there. But anyway, first of all, I wanted to announce that we do have a winner for the giveaway of the video. Uh, there's actually two videos out there where I have a giveaway on two different keyboards. The first giveaway, which was the white keyboard with the, the white mouse, that has been won. Um, the, I've, I've already contacted the person. They need to, they'll reply, uh, hopefully they'll reply soon. But I just did that today, so I just, uh, it just was discovered today. So I'll wait for her to reply. Um, anyway, she did win. Um, and I went ahead and contacted her the way I could. <laughs> um, anyway, so she, she did win that. Congratulations. Um, anyway, so I did want to announce that that was... Uh, Someone had won that, and we still have the other giveaway, the, the darker colored uh, keyboard. That one's still out there. Uh, you do need to comment on that video. I'll probably, hopefully, link to that video. Um, <laughs> remind me if I didn't link to it, by the way. If I didn't link to it, remind me, uh, so I can remember to do that. Anyway, um, so that one, you need to comment on it to be able to win. And please subscribe, that, that helps. Um, Anyway, but definitely comment to be able to win. Anyway, so we'll get back to we'll get to the review now. That's been a minute and a half. This is a newer uh, version of Pilgrim's Progress. Pilgrim's Progress came out like in what was it? Probably about close to 400 years ago, 300, 400 years ago, about around 1600s or something like that. Uh, I think it was the late 1600s, so probably about close to 300 years. But anyway, this is a new interpretation of it or a new um yeah they um they basically took the idea of pilgrim's progress and made their own um I, the i did get this book they were giving it away free i forget when they were giving it away free i think it was a couple months ago and i didn't bother reading this because i was waiting for the movie to come out so i wanted to watch the movie first before actually reading the book, before reading this version of the book. Um, so I've read the other book version. I've read the one that John Bunyan actually wrote, uh, at least close to it as possible. I think they had to update the English in that, like it's modern English or, or that. Um, anyway, I know I talked to a couple people about this Thursday. Um, well, we had, there was a discussion with friends about this on Thursday. Um, Anyway, <laughs> they had pointed out things that I didn't I didn't uh, realize were even in the in the movie, which was good because <laughs> uh, it was a very good discussion. But I wanted to make a review about it, and I'll probably share it with those people because I was kind of disappointed. I don't know if I told anyone I was disappointed. I remember being you know very excited that it was going to come out, and then I think I may have, when it, when it was announced that it was going to be free on, on, uh, online to watch for a few days, I think that was last month, toward the end of last month, they had it available for free to watch. I hadn't, I didn't even know the DVD had come out yet. I thought they were still working on getting the DVD out, but someone had t told me Thursday that it was out because he bought it. Like, huh, I didn't realize the DVD was out yet because I was still waiting for it to <laughs> be released because it was the end of last month when they had uh, released the the, the it for free on online so you could preview it i thought it was like you watch it online and then you then they'll get, get the dvd out and then you can buy the dvd but I mean, maybe that is what happened because i don't know when he bought it but anyway i watched it i remember i posted it on fa facebook that you know it was going to be out available for free i know someone else had you know posted the link as well uh i think a couple people did actually i think there was at least three of my friends well, two I know of for sure that posted posted about it. You know, I posted about it, and then two of my friends I think posted about it too. But anyway, um, that's what I remember. And we, I remember one of the friends I, I had, uh, <laughs> I replied to his, um, uh, to his saying that I, I only uh, that because uh, he would, he posted the, the 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 link to watching it for free. And I had said, I replied saying that I had watched part of it already because um, I, w I, w I, w I went on there and watched it when it was available free online. I watched it and, and I got to where they got to Worldly Wiseman and I can show you that in the book here. 
Um, let's see. That's um, right there. Worldly Wiseman. <laughs> I got to this part and then stopped. Not that I had anything. At this point, I didn't have anything against the against it. I thought that was um, fairly good. They, I think they did this part right here relatively good. I thought they did it pretty good anyway. Like the worldly wise man is kind of like a uh, legalistic Christian, um, <laughs> uh, someone who tries to justify themselves by keeping the law or justify themselves by by uh, being good or um, <laughs> by keeping the law and all that kind of stuff. Kind of like Judaizers as well. Um, or some people even see uh, the Hebrew roots or the Torah keepers or Torah observant as being like this worldly wise man. Uh, but legalistic Christianity would probably fall in that too. Where you try and keep your, you try and save yourself by your works, basically a works based salvation, which I'm not, I'm not into that. Um, I'm, I believe faith alone. So, um, not that we really live any way we want. Like Paul talks about that. You know, we don't live any way we want. We, you know, <laughs> um, how did Paul actually word that? Um, uh, something about, I don't remember how he worded it. I should really look that up. But I'm trying to make a review of this. I don't have the Bible with me. Um, it's something about, should we sin that grace may abound? And then he says, God forbid. <clears throat> anyway, so... <laughs> Yeah, so we're saved by faith, and we, 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 we um, may struggle with sin. I know Paul did, according to Romans seven, he did struggle with sin, and that was present tense too. So, anyway, but we <laughs> strive to be holy. Actually, holy technically means set apart, not you know, not someone who's without sin. It's someone who's set apart, different from the world. Uh, that's why it's always been different from the world. <laughs> Um, set apart, different from the world, in the world, but not of the world, that kind of thing. Um, anyway, I want to get back to the review here. <laughs> uh, but th this is how far I got the first day, and when I commented on that other person's post, because he was watching it online for free, and um, I think he was watching it online for free because I had said something about it. Uh, anyway, I hadn't then then the next day I watched the whole thing so I, I, I sat down and watched the whole thing and it's like okay it's definitely not like the book it's definitely I mean it's definitely not like uh, the original Pilgrim's Progress it was like okay well it's definitely different they, they definitely um, uh, it's just like wow they they took some liberties on making it very different from the original uh, and here's uh, Here's something that they probably did close to the original, the the uh, what's it called? Yeah, the uh, the Val the, the Vanity Fair. I thought they did this fairly well. This part here, the the uh, Vanity Fair. I think that they did this probably pretty good. Um, at least it seemed like they did that right. There was definitely other things that were done. This was kind of weird how they did this part. Um, this is the giant despair tower of, what's it called? Doubting Castle. Yeah, Doubting Castle and giant despair. I thought they did this really weird. Like, they added some comedy into it. Uh, it's like, okay, that's definitely different from the original. This is uh, also something that uh, was done very, very different from the original Pilgrim's Progress that John Bunyan wrote. Th this part here where he discovers the key of faith and then they get out of the cage there. I'm trying not to spoil it. Sorry, I might have to <laughs> put in there. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Um, anyway, uh, anyway, I probably should put that at the beginning, the spoiler alert thing. <laughs> My apologies. Anyway, um, this part here was something that was actually in the trailer. Uh, they had this part in the trailer, and I didn't think too badly of it when I saw that in the trailer. Um, it was like, okay, that was in the trailer, because what they basically did here was a different interpretation of the man in the iron cage. If you're familiar with the original Pilgrim's Progress, if you've read it, um, I recommend doing so. It's a good book. Um, anyway, in the original Pilgrim's Progress, 
John Bunyan had, um, it was actually back here a ways, where he talked about the man in the iron cage. I think they even mentioned it in here. Yeah, they did. Mentioned the man in the iron cage. Um, yeah, right here. <clears throat> um, and in John Bunyan's original book, it was about the unforgivable sin, the unpardonable sin, the uh, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. That was what this was supposed to represent. But this this interpretation of, of Pilgrim's Progress doesn't have it that way. This has it as where he, it's about him being in this cage. And so that that's definitely different. Although I kind of, the reason I didn't dismiss it when they had that in the trailer is because if you have read um, Grace Abound, The Chief of Sinners, which is John's, one of John Bunyan's other books, it's his basically autobiography. Um, you can, when, when he does go through his own Doubting Castle, he suspects that he had committed the unforgivable sin. Uh, so I can kind of see where they may have gotten that idea. That may be, that, so that's why I didn't dismiss it when, when I saw that originally, even though I mentioned that on Thursday. I did mention that on Thursday that they that they definitely this was different. One of the things that was mentioned Thursday that went completely over my head until it was mentioned Thursday. Um, I I didn't I I had completely uh, I didn't even realize it. But this is supposed to be the interpreter. It even says interpreter right there. That's a female. The interpreter is male because the ma the f interpreter is supposed to be a representation of the Holy Spirit. So this is almost blasphemy of the Holy Spirit right there. Because this is a female that's the interpreter, and the interpreter is supposed to be male, not female, because the interpreter is the Holy Spirit. So I don't know if they misunderstood, if whoever was putting this out, if they misunderstood who the interpreter was. Maybe then, maybe like me, they didn't realize the interpreter was supposed to be the Holy Spirit. Um, yeah, I can I can only guess that that they may not have known who. The interpreter was supposed to be who he was supposed to represent so this is this would be almost <laughs> blasphemous right here uh, they may not have known I mean it's very possible they didn't know um, it, it's very possible <laughs> that they didn't know uh, th the thing is if they did know and they were representing the Holy Spirit as female there are people out there that do that there are quite a few people out there that, that do that. I remember, was it the, the YouTube channel called God Rules had uh, several videos where he suspected that the Holy Spirit was female. It's like, no, that's that's basically in, incorrect. Um, is that something on her chin? Um, but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so I, I know that on God Rules, the, the two videos that he... Uh, the two videos I watched of his where he was trying to say that the Holy Spirit was female, obviously it's wrong, but one of the things that he had said is that he gets the idea from like two different places in the Bible, like the book of Proverbs, where the, uh, in Proverbs the, the wisdom is mentioned as being female, and <clears throat> there's somewhere else in the Bible where wisdom is, is also... Um, uh, another name or another way of describing the Holy Spirit and like I think what's going on there is in the book of Proverbs um, Solomon who wrote that isn't actually saying that the Holy Spirit is female he's probably not even thinking about the Holy Spirit he's just thinking about wisdom and calling wisdom a she and he has and for him it has no connection to the Holy Spirit whatsoever it's just that that's the the terminology he's using to describe wisdom as as being she uh but he, he i don't believe he intended it to be that the holy spirit is female i i think it's just a misinterpretation by the guy called god rules i think god rules even said that he views he views god like a family like a representation of a family because you have a father you have a mother and a son I don't think that's the correct interpretation. I don't think that's correct. I know that God is three persons, but they're all male. Um, and he's had, had a comment about that, and I don't want to even mention what comment he said about that. It's like, oh dear. <laughs> no, um, yeah. <clears throat> but anyway, um, I don't recommend the God Rules channel, by the way. Uh, and and I don't agree with this idea that the, I, I, I know that the Holy Spirit is male. 
So th if, if they intended to represent the Holy Spirit as female, they would have had that completely wrong. Now, if I can remember what else is wrong with this particular interpretation, uh, and I probably should have read the book first, uh, before, but I was really waiting for the the, the movie to come out. Um, I kind of looked through it. That was about as much as I, I kind of looked through it and was like, ah, I'm going to wait for the movie. So I put it aside and was waiting for the movie. <laughs> so I think someone had mentioned this part um, where he was freed from his burden. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think someone mentioned this part where, yeah, they did this quite a bit wrong. Um, there was also another part where they did it very different. Um, where was that at? Um, let's see. Well, this uh, is coming up. This part here. No, this part here. Uh, yeah, right. yeah, well, basically, where um, Christian, the the new Christian character is, is uh, battling um, a, a, a Apollyon. Um, it seems like the reason for the battle was a little bit different than the original. I think they also, I know they left out quite a bit, but I was thinking of another part that they left out that, that was important for me. Um, like uh, another part that I felt was very important that they, I don't remember being mentioned in this movie or book, was um, the Valley of the Shadow of Death. Because uh, the Valley of the Shadow of Death is something I experienced, and very few people, when I when I personally experienced the Valley of the Shadow of Death, it was uh, <laughs> something I had never seen before, and I hadn't heard anybody talk about it anywhere in church, because, you know, I've been a Christian all my life, and I don't remember anybody ever mentioning the Valley of the Shadow of Death. I don't ever remember it being mentioned, and I don't think they mentioned it in this book at all. And even, even the movie. But basically, the Valley of the Shadow of Death, um, it, it, if you've ever read The Pilgrim's Progress or even Grace Abound, it is basically the thorn in the flesh, really. Um, it is it is the thorn in the flesh that, that uh, Paul experienced. The, and the thorn in the flesh is different for everybody, just like the Valley of the Shadow of Death is because it's the same thing. Uh, according to how John Bunyan wrote it into the Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, anyway, in the Valley of the Shadow of Death, the way I experienced it is basically the same way John Bunyan did. Uh, and, and as I explained, I couldn't find anyone who was talking about it. It scared me greatly. Um, it's basically where you're experiencing um, troubling thoughts that are not actually your own. Um, <laughs> I may get all kinds of accusations, but oh well. It's something that happened. Back in, what was it, 2015? I think it was 2015. It was about, the, uh, about this time in 2015 for three long months. Yeah, three, <laughs> three long months. Uh, this <laughs> three long months. Um, I experienced where I went through the valley of the shadow of death and a thorn in the flesh. Mainly because I, I, before this happened, I was extremely prideful. I was actually prideful about being saved. Um, and God allowed me to experience this in order to reduce that pride. Um, and I had never seen anybody ever talk about this experience. So uh, anyway, I should probably get into what it is. But it's, it's when you have these thoughts that are not your own. And they're, a lot of times they're blasphemous thoughts toward God or they're... Um, they they are thoughts about um, they're, they're they're blasphemous thoughts toward God that you think you're your own. They're um, they're um, also even accusations where you're being accused of of falling away. You're being accused of committing the unforgivable sin, and you're even thinking you had committed the unforgivable sin. By having these all these blasphemous thoughts come into your head, and none of these thoughts are your own. And what's terrible about this experience for most people is 
they think these thoughts are their own because it sounds like their own voice. And that's how it was in, for John Bunyan, and that's how it was in, in Pilgrim's Progress, where the original Pilgrim's Progress, not in this one because I didn't even mention it in that one, it, it was these blasphemous thoughts. And that's how what I experienced. I couldn't even stop these thoughts, and I was even trying to think over top of them. It was here was the thought, the, a thought would come up that was against God, and I would immediately try and say good stuff about God. And, <laughs> and there were times when... I was thinking something, and this other voice was thinking something at the exact same time, so it couldn't have been me anyway. But for three long months, that happened. If you want to accuse me of anything, that it, it's what happened. I know that, and I hadn't really seen anyone else experience that until I met John Bunyan. And then after I saw that John Bunyan went through it, I have seen other people who have gone through it. I remember um, this guy, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ooh, what is his name? <laughs> I forget the guy's name, but he had gone through it as well. Um, he's a, a preacher or a pastor. But I really don't remember his name at the moment. What is his name? Dan Muller. There we go. I know some people don't like Dan Muller, um, mainly because of who he hangs out with. But uh, at the time, back in 2015, 2016, I was watching his stuff. Um, and... He had, he had uh, shown that he had gone through the valley of the shadow of death, although he didn't call it that. And then he also expressed that since he's a pastor, he's seen many of his congregation go through it. Like, wow. Okay, so I'm not alone. So hey, here I am. Okay, I don't feel so alone. And I, I know that people don't like Dan Muller. I'm aware of that. Mainly not him himself. It's usually the, some of the people that he hangs out with. So I don't think I've actually ever seen a uh, video that that has actually called him a false teacher. At least I don't think I have. But some some of his friends, yes, um, like Todd White. <laughs> I know there's a lot of people that have um, accused Todd White of of being a false teacher, mainly because he hangs out with Kenneth Copeland. But uh, <laughs> it's mainly because of that. So I'll, I'll let you think of that how you want. I'm just saying that that's what other people have said. Um, I don't watch Todd White. I don't watch Dan Muller anymore either. And I don't, I think I watched a, only a few of Todd White's things, even when I was watching Dan Muller. Uh, but uh, anyway, <laughs> sorry, I have all kinds of other <laughs> stuff beside me. If you could probably hear the bags, because there's things I was reviewing, things I had received in the mail yesterday. I had actually made a not yesterday, but the day before. I had made a different video about unboxing. <laughs> it's just still, still the stuff for the unboxing and sitting next to me. Uh, but I probably won't post that video because the unboxing went really bad. This video is going pretty good, but that one went really bad. Where everything kept going wrong that it would go wrong. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, I don't hang out with Todd Todd, Todd White or Dan Mahler. I... Um, and I don't think it's right to accuse someone of being a false teacher just because of who they hang out with. Um, you know, if they're teaching false doctrine or um, leading people away from God, then then yeah, we, we yeah, then yeah, that's a bad thing. But if they're leading people toward God, then I think that's a good thing. Anyway, so whether I want you to watch Dan Muller or Todd White. Let God be the judge. If God wants you to watch them, cool. If God doesn't, cool. Um, I'll let you be the judge of that because I'm not going to tell you not to. I'd be careful on anybody you listen to, including me. So um, <laughs> it's just just anybody you listen to. It doesn't matter. I've learned this myself. Um, I've learned it the hard way. Uh, just be careful who you listen to. I've learned it the hard way. Just be careful who you listen to. Uh, do I support, do I agree with some of the things that Todd, Todd White teaches? I don't even know everything he teaches, but I know he has done the hand signs um, that indicate, you know, that are not good, but he may not know what they mean. Uh, I've, I, I know that there's, um, he actually has a weird idea of the whole cross. Um, he has a very odd view of the cross, um, what it means and this kind of stuff. And he seems to um, 
and this is only I, I've very very watched very few of his videos, but he seems to up up the value of humanity while kind of downgrading God, and that's like no, we need to up God. <laughs> you know, we need to be humble here. So yeah, I'm hoping I'm making sense. So he seems to need to, he needs to be a little bit more humble. Um, so I know he's done healings um, now. I know that you know he, God can allow somebody to heal that isn't saved. I mean that's almost clear from Scripture because there's a bunch of people that say they did this, that, and the other thing, and God says I never knew you. And so God gave him the gift of healing. God gave him the gift of uh, prophecy and all this, but but the, God never knew him. I mean they obviously asked for the gifts. God gave him the gifts, but there was no relationship there. Like you can be given, you can be given a gift by God like the gift of healing or the gift of prophecy, and not be saved. <laughs> so you can be given these gifts and not necessarily be saved. So <clears throat> whether Todd White's that way, I don't know. He could be. It could be that he's, uh, that he's doing these healings <laughs> and God's allowing him to do them, but he may be one of those that hears, I never knew you. I don't know. That's what a lot of people think, that he's going to be one of those that hears, I never... He may, <laughs> a lot of people think, based on what he teaches in that... That he may be one of those that hears, I never knew you. Even though he's doing healings and whatnot. Well, those people did healings. And God gave him the gift of healing. God gave him the gift of prophecy and all this. But there was no relationship there. <laughs> there was no relationship. Um, and that's one thing that actually Dan Muller does teach. Is to have that relationship with God. So, with Todd White, I don't know if he does. He focuses a lot on the healings. So, um, yeah, <laughs> well, I got this review, uh, but anyway, I don't know Todd White. I don't know him. I'm not going to, you know, defend him completely because I don't know him. I don't know him. Dan Muller, I stopped watching him over two years ago. So, but I, one of, a lot of the things that he had taught that I listened to were really good, like loving people. Uh, I really agreed with his loving stuff. Like, we need to love people. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he was right on that. We need to love people. We need to have a relationship with God. He talked about that stuff. And he talked about what I was talking about earlier, the value of the shadow of death. Well, he didn't call it that, but he talked about that. So he had a lot of truth in things he, he was touch, talking about. Uh, now, <laughs> do I agree with everything? I don't know everything. I just, the things I watched were the, the love stuff, were, you know, love other people. You know, love God and love other people. That's in the Bible. So, yeah. So do I uh, <laughs> Do I agree with everything he teaches? I don't know everything he teaches. But I do think, yeah, he's right on the relationship with God. He's right on loving other people. Um, now the other stuff he teaches, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I think he does teach identity. He does do the identity preaching. Um I, need, I know we need to be careful with identity preaching because identity preaching, uh, especially if not, uh, you need to be very careful with it because it can be easily misunderstood or easily interpreted as, uh, what is it called, Christ consciousness. So we need to be extremely careful about that. Don't get into the whole Christ consciousness stuff. I don't think Dan Mahler teaches that. At least I don't think so, but I could be wrong. I don't want to necessarily um, defend him and be accused of, of being a false teacher myself. Um, but the things that those things that I mentioned, I think he's right on. Whether he's right on everything, whether he's saved, I don't know. He could also be one of those that I that hears I never knew you. Heck, I could be one of those. <laughs> so I've worried about that, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, although it's interesting that I've actually thought you know that I'd be one that hears that and and then. So what's interesting, I remember one time I thought that I'd be one that hears that and then God sends somebody out of the blue, out of just randomly sends someone to me and says, God loves you. I remember that happened and I just, it's a it was a friend of mine, but he, and he randomly came up to me and said, Jesus loves you. And it was just random. Like, okay, why did you say that? I don't remember. I don't, I was trying not to be rude and I, I wasn't being rude. But I asked him like, why, what, why, why are you saying this? 
And he basically said he basically said that he was obeying God. God told him to say that. Like, wow. Cool. <laughs> like, like, wow, that's pretty cool. It's like that is neat. That is really neat. Um, I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> now I don't know since Dan Muller is into the relationship thing, having a relationship with God, I think he is right about that. Now, whether he's right about everything, I don't know. <clears throat> Again, I know we need to be care very careful about who we listen to. I, we really need to be careful, and sometimes I need to do this myself too. I need to be careful who I listen to, um, and I need because I've I've been there where I've listened to the wrong people and then you know had trouble because of that. So, um, and the, I'm telling you from experience, we need to be careful. I'm telling you from experience that I've. I've gone the wrong direction. I've, I've listened to the wrong people and then God has to bring me back. Uh, so just be careful. Don't do what I did. Uh, cause I'm trying, I'm I, because of my experience, I'm now learning to be a little bit more cautious about who I listen to. Um, you know, when I do listen to them, I got to almost take what they say and be a brilliant about it. You know, almost everything instead of just a few things. Cause there been, there's been times in the past where I was a brilliant about some things and then some things I just accepted. So it's kind of, sometimes I'd be a brilliant and then sometimes I wouldn't. So I think I need to be a brilliant on everything, not just some of it, but everything. And I need to go to God in prayer about everything, not just a few things, but everything. <laughs> um, and maybe that's not the best way of doing it, but it just, it seems to be, it seems to be the only way. <laughs> so, because we're only saved by faith, and I do believe that is biblical. So, and I, I think the, the, this particular book, they didn't do quite right. So, anyway, but we, <laughs> just like this, you know, just like this, uh, you know, this is the same type of thing where, you know, I read this book, or read it, <laughs> listen, watched this movie, and I was disappointed. So, it, it's another one of those things where I, I was expecting something different. So anyway, I think I'll call it in because it's already 32 minutes. <laughs>